The 2016 United States presidential election was the 58th quadrennial American presidential election, held on Tuesday, November 8, 2016. The Republican ticket of businessman Donald Trump and Indiana Governor Mike Pence defeated the Democratic ticket of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and U.S. Senator from Virginia Tim Kaine, despite losing the popular vote. Trump took office as the 45th president, and Pence as the 48th vice president, on January 20, 2017. Incumbent Democratic President Barack Obama was ineligible to serve a third term due to the term limits established by the 22nd Amendment. Trump emerged as the front-runner amidst a wide field of Republican primary candidates, while Clinton defeated Senator Bernie Sanders and became the first female presidential nominee of a major American party. Trump's populist, nationalist campaign, which promised to make America great again, and opposed political correctness, illegal immigration, and many free trade agreements, garnered extensive free media coverage. Clinton emphasized her political experience, denounced Trump and many of his supporters as bigots, and advocated the expansion of President Obama's policies, racial, LGBT, and women's rights, and inclusive capitalism. The tone of the general election campaign was widely characterized as divisive and negative. Trump faced controversy over his views on race and immigration, incidents of violence against protesters at his rallies, and his alleged sexual misconduct, while Clinton was dogged by declining approval ratings and an FBI investigation of her improper use of a private email server. Clinton had held the lead in nearly every pre-election nationwide poll and in most swing state polls, leading some commentators to compare Trump's victory to Harry S. Truman's victory in 1948 as one of the greatest political upsets in modern American history. While Clinton received 2.87 million more votes nationwide the largest margin ever for a candidate who lost the Electoral College, a margin of 2.1 percent, Trump won a majority of electoral votes, with a total of 306 electors from 30 states, including upset victories in the pivotal Rust Belt region. Ultimately, Trump received 304 electoral votes and Clinton garnered 227, as two faithless electors defected from Trump and five defected from Clinton. Trump is the fifth person in U.S. history to become president while losing the nationwide popular vote. He is the first president without any prior experience in public service or the military, as well as the wealthiest and the oldest at inauguration. The United States government's intelligence agencies concluded on January 6, 2017, that the Russian government had interfered in the 2016 United States elections in order to undermine public faith in the U.S. democratic process, denigrate Secretary Clinton, and harm her electability and potential presidency." President Trump repeatedly criticized these intelligence claims, citing a lack of evidence and calling the issue a «hoax» and «fake news». Investigations regarding potential collusion between the Trump campaign and Russian officials were started by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Senate Intelligence Committee, and the House Intelligence Committee. The special counsel investigation which began in May 2017 is currently ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> Background Article II of the United States Constitution provides that the President and Vice President of the United States must be natural-born citizens of the United States, at least 35 years old, and residents of the United States for a period of at least 14 years. Candidates for the presidency typically seek the nomination of one of the political parties, in which case each party devises a method such as a primary election to choose the candidate the party deems best suited to run for the position. Traditionally, the primary elections are indirect elections where voters cast ballots for a slate of party delegates pledged to a particular candidate. The party's delegates then officially nominate a candidate to run on the party's behalf. The general election in November is also an indirect election, where voters cast ballots for a slate of members of the Electoral College. These electors in turn directly elect the president and vice president. President Barack Obama, a Democrat and former U.S. Senator from Illinois, was ineligible to seek re-election to a third term due to the restrictions of the 22nd Amendment. In accordance with Section 1 of the 20th Amendment, his term expired at noon on January 20, 2017. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Primary process. 
The series of presidential primary elections and caucuses took place between February and June 2016, staggered among the 50 states, the District of Columbia and U.S. territories. This nominating process was also an indirect election, where voters cast ballots for a slate of delegates to a political party's nominating convention, who in turn elected their party's presidential nominee. Speculation about the 2016 campaign began almost immediately following the 2012 campaign, with New York Magazine declaring the race had begun in an article published on November 8, two days after the 2012 election. On the same day, Politico released an article predicting the 2016 general election would be between Clinton and former Florida Governor Jeb Bush, while a New York Times article named New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey as potential candidates. Nominations Republican Party Primaries With 17 major candidates entering the race, starting with Ted Cruz on March 23, 2015, this was the largest presidential primary field for any political party in American history. Prior to the Iowa caucuses on February 1, 2016, Perry, Walker, Jindal, Graham, and Pataki withdrew due to low polling numbers. Despite leading many polls in Iowa, Trump came in second to Cruz, after which Huckabee, Paul, and Santorum withdrew due to poor performances at the ballot box. Following a sizable victory for Trump in the New Hampshire primary, Christie, Fiorina and Gilmore abandoned the race. Bush followed suit after scoring fourth place to Trump, Rubio and Cruz in South Carolina. On March 1, 2016, the first of four, Super Tuesday, primaries, Rubio won his first contest in Minnesota, Cruz won Alaska, Oklahoma and his home of Texas and Trump won the other seven states that voted. Failing to gain traction, Carson suspended his campaign a few days later. On March 15, 2016, the second, Super Tuesday, Kasich won his only contest in his home state of Ohio and Trump won five primaries including Florida. Rubio suspended his campaign after losing his home state. Between March 16 and May 3, 2016, only three candidates remained in the race, Trump, Cruz and Kasich. Cruz won the most delegates in four Western contests and in Wisconsin, keeping a credible path to denying Trump the nomination on first ballot with 1,237 delegates. Trump then augmented his lead by scoring landslide victories in New York and five northeastern states in April, followed by a decisive victory in Indiana on May 3, 2016, securing all 57 of the state's delegates. Without any further chances of forcing a contested convention, both Cruz and Kasich suspended their campaigns. Trump remained the only active candidate and was declared the presumptive Republican nominee by Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus on the evening of May 3, 2016. A 2018 study found that media coverage of Trump led to increased public support for him during the primaries. The study showed Trump received nearly $2 billion in free media, more than double any other candidate. Political scientist John Sides argued that Trump's polling surge was almost certainly due to frequent media coverage of his campaign. Sides concluded, Trump is surging in the polls because the news media has consistently focused on him since he announced his candidacy on June 16. Prior to clinching the Republican nomination, Trump received little support from establishment Republicans. Topic. Nominees. Other major candidates Major candidates were determined by the various media based on common consensus. The following were invited to sanction televised debates based on their poll ratings. Trump received 14,010,177 total votes in the primary. Trump, Cruz, Rubio and Kasich each won at least one primary, with Trump receiving the highest number of votes and Ted Cruz receiving the second highest. <laughs> Vice presidential selection Trump turned his attention towards selecting a running mate after he became the presumptive nominee on May 4, 2016. 
In mid-June, Eli Stokels and Burgess Everett of Politico reported that the Trump campaign was considering New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich from Georgia, Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama, and Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon. A June 30 report from The Washington Post also included Senators Bob Corker from Tennessee, Richard Burr from North Carolina, Tom Cotton from Arkansas, Joni Ernst from Iowa, and Indiana Governor Mike Pence as individuals still being considered for the ticket. Trump also stated that he was considering two military generals for the position, including retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. In July 2016, it was reported that Trump had narrowed his list of possible running mates down to three Christie, Gingrich, and Pence. On July 14, 2016, several major media outlets reported that Trump had selected Pence as his running mate. Trump confirmed these reports in a message on Twitter on July 15, 2016, and formally made the announcement the following day in New York. On July 19, the second night of the 2016 Republican National Convention, Pence won the Republican vice presidential nomination by acclamation. Democratic Party Primaries Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who also served in the U.S. Senate and was the First Lady of the United States, became the first Democrat in the field to formally launch a major candidacy for the presidency with an announcement on April 12, 2015, via a video message. While nationwide opinion polls in 2015 indicated that Clinton was the front-runner for the 2016 Democratic presidential nomination, she faced strong challenges from independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, who became the second major candidate when he formally announced on April 30, 2015, that he was running for the Democratic nomination. September 2015 polling numbers indicated a narrowing gap between Clinton and Sanders. On May 30, 2015, former Governor of Maryland Martin O'Malley was the third major candidate to enter the Democratic primary race, followed by former Independent Governor and Republican Senator of Rhode Island Lincoln Chaffee on June 3, 2015, former Virginia Senator Jim Webb on July 2, 2015, and former Harvard Law Professor Lawrence Lessig on September 6, 2015. On October 20, 2015, Webb announced his withdrawal from the Democratic primaries and explored a potential independent independent run. The next day Vice President Joe Biden decided not to run, ending months of speculation, stating, "...while I will not be a candidate, I will not be silent." On October 23, Chaffee withdrew, stating that he hoped for, "...an end to the endless wars and the beginning of a new era for the United States and humanity." On November 2, after failing to qualify for the second DNC-sanctioned debate after adoption of a rule change negated polls which before might have necessitated his inclusion in the debate, Lessig withdrew as well, narrowing the field to Clinton, O'Malley, and Sanders. On February 1, 2016, in an extremely close contest, Clinton won the Iowa caucuses by a margin of 0.2 points over Sanders. After winning no delegates in Iowa, O'Malley withdrew from the presidential race that day. On February 9, Sanders bounced back to win the New Hampshire primary with 60% of the vote. In the remaining two February contests, Clinton won the Nevada caucuses with 53% of the vote and scored a decisive victory in the South Carolina primary with 73% of the vote. On March 1, 11 states participated in the first of four Super Tuesday primaries. Clinton won Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Massachusetts, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia and 504 pledged delegates, while Sanders won Colorado, Minnesota, Oklahoma and his home state of Vermont and 340 delegates. The following weekend, Sanders won victories in Kansas, Nebraska and Maine with 15 to 30 point margins, while Clinton won the Louisiana primary with 71% of the vote. On March 8, despite never having a lead in the Michigan primary, Sanders won by a small margin of 1.5 points and outperforming polls by over 19 points, while Clinton won 83% of the vote in Mississippi. On March 15, the second, Super Tuesday, Clinton won in Florida, Illinois, Missouri, North Carolina and Ohio. Between March 22 and April 9, Sanders won six caucuses in Idaho, Utah, Alaska, Hawaii, Washington and Wyoming, as well as the Wisconsin primary, while Clinton won the Arizona primary. On April 19, Clinton won the New York primary with 58% of the vote. 
On April 26, in the third, Super Tuesday, dubbed the Acela Primary, she won contests in Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland and Pennsylvania, while Sanders won in Rhode Island. Over the course of May, Sanders accomplished another surprise win in the Indiana primary and also won in West Virginia and Oregon, while Clinton won the Guam caucus and Kentucky primary. On June 4 and 5, Clinton won two victories in the Virgin Islands caucus and Puerto Rico primary. On June 6, 2016, the Associated Press and NBC News reported that Clinton had become the presumptive nominee after reaching the required number of delegates, including pledged delegates and superdelegates, to secure the nomination, becoming the first woman to ever clinch the presidential nomination of a major United States political party. On June 7, Clinton secured a majority of pledged delegates after winning primaries in California, New Jersey, New Mexico and South Dakota, while Sanders only won in Montana and North Dakota. Clinton also won the final primary in the District of Columbia on June 14. At the conclusion of the primary process, Clinton had won 2,204 pledged delegates 54% of the total awarded by the primary elections and caucuses, while Sanders had won 1,847 46%. Out of the 714 unpledged delegates or superdelegates who were set to vote in the convention in July, Clinton received endorsements from 560 78%, while Sanders received 47 7%. Although Sanders had not formally dropped out of the race, he announced on June 16, 2016, that his main goal in the coming months would be to work with Clinton to defeat Trump in the general election. On July 8, appointees from the Clinton campaign, the Sanders campaign, and the Democratic National Committee negotiated a draft of the party's platform. On July 12, Sanders formally endorsed Clinton at a rally in New Hampshire in which he appeared with her. Topic: Nominees. Topic: Other major candidates. The following candidates were frequently interviewed by major broadcast networks and cable news channels, or were listed in publicly published national polls. Lessig was invited to one forum, but withdrew when rules were changed which prevented him from participating in officially sanctioned debates. Clinton received 16,849,779 votes in the primary. Vice presidential selection In April 2016, the Clinton campaign began to compile a list of 15 to 20 individuals to vet for the position of running mate, even though Sanders continued to challenge Clinton in the Democratic primaries. In mid-June, the Wall Street Journal reported that Clinton's shortlist included Representative Xavier Becerra from California, Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey, Senator Sherrod Brown from Ohio, Housing and Urban Development Secretary Julian Castro from Texas, Mayor of Los Angeles Eric Garcetti from California, Senator Tim Kaine from Virginia, Labor Secretary Tom Perez from Maryland, Representative Tim Ryan from Ohio, and Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts. Subsequent reports stated that Clinton was also considering Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack, retired Admiral James Stavridis, and Governor John Hickenlooper of Colorado. In discussing her potential vice presidential choice, Clinton stated that the most important attribute she looked for was the ability and experience to immediately step into the role of president. On July 22, Clinton announced that she had chosen Senator Tim Kaine from Virginia as her running mate. The delegates at the 2016 Democratic National Convention, which took place July 25-28, formally nominated the Democratic ticket. <laughs> Third parties and independents Third party and independent candidates that have obtained more than 100,000 votes nationally and 1% of the vote in at least one state, are listed separately. Libertarian Party Gary Johnson, 29th Governor of New Mexico. Vice Presidential Nominee, Bill Weld, 68th Governor of Massachusetts. Green Party Jill Stein, Physician from Lexington, Massachusetts.
Vice Presidential Nominee, Ahamu Baraka, Activist from Washington, D.C. Independent Evan McMullen, Chief Policy Director for the House Republican Conference. Vice Presidential Nominee, Mindy Finn, President of Empowered Women. Topic. Constitution Party Daryl Castle, attorney from Memphis, Tennessee. Vice Presidential Nominee, Scott Bradley, businessman from Utah. Topic. Other nominations Topic. Candidates Gallery Topic. General election campaign Hillary Clinton focused her candidacy on several themes, including raising middle class incomes, expanding women's rights, instituting campaign finance reform, and improving the Affordable Care Act. In March 2016, she laid out a detailed economic plan basing her economic philosophy on inclusive capitalism, which proposed a clawback which would rescind tax relief and other benefits for companies that move jobs overseas, with provision of incentives for companies that share profits with employees, communities and the environment, rather than focusing on short-term profits to increase stock value and rewarding shareholders, as well as increasing collective bargaining rights, and placing an exit tax on companies that move their headquarters out of America in order to pay a lower tax rate overseas. Clinton promoted equal pay for equal work to address current alleged shortfalls in how much women are paid to do the same jobs men do, promoted explicitly focus on family issues and support of universal preschool, expressed support for the right to same-sex marriage, and proposed allowing undocumented immigrants to have a path to citizenship stating that it is at its heart a family issue. Donald Trump's campaign drew heavily on his personal image, enhanced by his previous media exposure. The primary slogan of the Trump campaign, extensively used on campaign merchandise, was Make America Great Again. The red baseball cap with the slogan emblazoned on the front became a symbol of the campaign, and has been frequently donned by Trump and his supporters. Trump's right-wing populist positions—reported by The New Yorker to be nativist, protectionist, and semi-isolationist—differ in many ways from traditional conservatism. He opposed many free trade deals and military interventionist policies that conservatives generally support, and opposed cuts in Medicare and Social Security benefits. Moreover, he has insisted that Washington is broken and can only be fixed by an outsider. Trump's support was high among working and middle-class white male voters with annual incomes of less than $50,000 and no college degree. This group, particularly those with less than a high school education, suffered a decline in their income in recent years. According to the Washington Post, support for Trump is higher in areas with a higher mortality rate for middle-age white people. A sample of interviews with more than 11,000 Republican-leaning respondents from August to December 2015 found that Trump at that time found his strongest support among Republicans in West Virginia, followed by New York, and then followed by six southern states. Clinton had an uneasy, and at times adversarial relationship with the press throughout her life in public service. Weeks before her official entry as a presidential candidate, Clinton attended a political press corps event, pledging to start fresh on what she described as a complicated relationship with political reporters. Clinton was initially criticized by the press for avoiding taking their questions, after which she provided more interviews. In contrast, Trump benefited from free media more than any other candidate. From the beginning of his campaign through February 2016, Trump received almost $2 billion in free media attention, twice the amount that Clinton received. According to data from the Tyndall Report, which tracks nightly news content, through February 2016, Trump alone accounted for more than a quarter of all 2016 election coverage on the evening newscasts of NBC, CBS and ABC, more than all the Democratic campaigns combined. Observers noted Trump's ability to garner constant mainstream media coverage, almost at will. However, Trump frequently criticized the media for writing what he alleged to be false stories about him and he has called upon his supporters to be the silent majority. Trump also said the media put false meaning into the words I say 
and says he does not mind being criticized by the media as long as they are honest about it. Both Clinton and Trump were seen unfavorably by the general public, and their controversial nature set the tone of the campaign. Clinton's practice during her time as Secretary of State of using a private email address and server, in lieu of State Department servers, gained widespread public attention back in March 2015. Concerns were raised about security and preservation of emails, and the possibility that laws may have been violated. After allegations were raised that some of the emails in question fell into this so-called born classified category, an FBI probe was initiated regarding how classified information was handled on the Clinton server. The FBI probe was concluded on July 5, 2016, with a recommendation of no charges, a recommendation that was followed by the Justice Department. On October 28, 11 days before the election, FBI Director James Comey informed Congress that the FBI was analyzing additional emails obtained during its investigation of an unrelated case. On November 6, he notified Congress that the new emails did not change the FBI's earlier conclusion. Also, on September 9, 2016, Clinton stated, You know, just to be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump's supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. They're racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic—you name it. Donald Trump criticized Clinton's remark as insulting his supporters. The following day Clinton expressed regret for saying, half, while insisting that Trump had deplorably amplified, hateful views and voices. Previously on August 25, 2016, Clinton gave a speech criticizing Trump's campaign for using, racist lies and allowing the alt-right to gain prominence. On the other side, on October 7, 2016, video and accompanying audio were released by The Washington Post in which Trump referred obscenely to women in a 2005 conversation with Billy Bush while they were preparing to film an episode of Access Hollywood. The audio was met with a reaction of disbelief and disgust from the media. Following the revelation, Trump's campaign issued an apology, stating that the video was of a private conversation from many years ago. The incident was condemned by numerous prominent Republicans like Reince Priebus, Mitt Romney, John Kasich, Jeb Bush and the Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. By October 8 several dozen Republicans had called for Trump to withdraw from the campaign and let Pence head the ticket. Trump insisted he would never drop out. The ongoing controversy of the election made third parties attract voters' attention. On March 3, 2016, Libertarian Gary Johnson addressed the Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington, D.C., touting himself as the third-party option for anti-Trump Republicans. In early May, some commentators opined that Johnson was moderate enough to pull votes away from both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump who were very disliked and polarizing. Both conservative and liberal media noted that Johnson could get votes from Never Trump Republicans and disaffected Bernie Sanders supporters. Johnson also began to get time on national television, being invited on ABC News, NBC News, CBS News, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Bloomberg, and many other networks. In September and October 2016, Johnson suffered a string of damaging stumbles when he has fielded questions about foreign affairs. On September 8, Johnson, when he appeared on MSNBC's Morning Joe, was asked by panelist Mike Barnacle. What would you do, if you were elected, about Aleppo? Referring to a war-torn city in Syria. Johnson responded. And what is Aleppo? Johnson's. What is Aleppo? Question prompted widespread attention, much of it negative. Later that day, Johnson said that he had. Blanked. And that he did. Understand the dynamics of the Syrian conflict, I talk about them every day. On the other hand, Green Party candidate Jill Stein stated that the Democratic and Republican parties are two corporate parties that have converged into one. Concerned by the rise of the far right internationally and the tendency towards neoliberalism within the Democratic Party, she has said. The answer to neofascism is stopping neoliberalism. Putting another Clinton in the White House will fan the flames of this right-wing extremism. In response to Johnson's growing poll numbers, the Hillary Clinton campaign and Democratic allies increased their criticism of Johnson in September 2016, warning that 
A vote for a third party is a vote for Donald Trump and deploying Senator Bernie Sanders, Clinton's former primary rival, who supported her in the general election to win over voters who might be considering voting for Johnson or for Stein. Topic: <laughs> Ballot access. Candidates in bold were on ballots representing 270 electoral votes without needing write in states. All other candidates were on the ballots of fewer than 25 states, but had right in access greater than 270. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Party conventions. Democratic Party. July 25 to 28, 2016, Democratic National Convention was held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Republican Party. July 18-21, 2016, Republican National Convention was held in Cleveland, Ohio, Libertarian Party May 26-30, 2016, Libertarian National Convention was held in Orlando, Florida, Green Party August 4-7, 2016, Green National Convention was held in Houston, Texas, Constitution Party April 13-16, 2016, Constitution Party National Convention was held in Salt Lake City, Utah. Topic: Campaign finance. This is an overview of the money used in the campaign as it is reported to Federal Election Commission (FEC) and released in September 2016. Outside groups are independent expenditure only committees also called PACs and super PACs. The sources of the numbers are the FEC and Center for Responsive Politics. Some spending totals are not available, due to withdrawals before the FEC deadline. As of September 2016, 10 candidates with ballot access have filed financial reports with the FEC. <laughs> <laughs> Newspaper endorsements Clinton was endorsed by the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the Houston Chronicle, the San Jose Mercury News, the Chicago Sun Times and the New York Daily News editorial boards. Trump, who has frequently criticized the mainstream media, was not endorsed by the vast majority of newspapers, with the Las Vegas Review Journal, the Florida Times Union, and the tabloid National Enquirer his highest profile supporters. Several papers which endorsed Clinton, such as the Houston Chronicle, the Dallas Morning News, the San Diego Union Tribune, the Columbus Dispatch and the Arizona Republic, endorsed their first Democratic candidate for many decades. USA Today, which had not endorsed any candidate since it was founded in 1982, broke tradition by giving an anti-endorsement against Trump, declaring him, "...unfit for the presidency." The Atlantic, which has been in circulation since 1857, gave Clinton its third ever endorsement after Abraham Lincoln and Lyndon Johnson. Other traditionally Republican papers, including the New Hampshire Union Leader, which had endorsed the Republican nominee in every election for the last 100 years, the Detroit News, which had not endorsed a non Republican in its 143 years, and the Chicago Tribune, endorsed Gary Johnson. Russian involvement On December 9, 2016, the Central Intelligence Agency issued an assessment to lawmakers in the U.S. Senate, stating that a Russian entity hacked the DNC and John Podesta's emails to assist Donald Trump. The Federal Bureau of Investigation agreed. President Barack Obama ordered a full enquiry into such possible intervention. Director of National Intelligence James R. Clapper in early January 2017 testified before a Senate committee that Russia's meddling in the 2016 presidential campaign went beyond hacking, and included disinformation and the dissemination of fake news, often promoted on social media. President elect Trump originally called the report fabricated, and WikiLeaks denied any involvement by Russian authorities. Days later, Trump said he could be convinced of the Russian hacking. If there is a unified presentation of evidence from the Federal Bureau of Investigation and other agencies, several U.S. Senators including Republicans John McCain, Richard Burr, and Lindsey Graham demanded a congressional investigation. 
The Senate Intelligence Committee announced the scope of their official inquiry on December 13, 2016. On a bipartisan basis, work began on January 24, 2017. Topic: <laughs> Voter suppression. The 2016 presidential election was the first in 50 years without all the protections of the original Voting Rights Act. Fourteen states had new voting restrictions in place, including swing states such as Virginia and Wisconsin. Notable expressions, phrases, and statements Basket of deplorables, a controversial phrase coined by Hillary Clinton to describe half of those who support Trump. Bertie Sanders, during a campaign stop in Portland, Oregon, a house finch landed on Sanders's lectern while he was addressing a large crowd of supporters. The event became popular with the Sanders community and Sanders even began to publicize the bird as, Bertie Sanders. Build the wall, Mexico will pay for the wall, Trump's campaign promise that if elected he will build a wall on the border between the U.S. and Mexico, with Mexico financing the project. Drain the swamp, a phrase Donald Trump invoked late in the campaign to describe what needs to be done to fix problems in the federal government. Trump acknowledged that the phrase was suggested to him, and he was initially skeptical about using it. Feel the burn, a phrase chanted by supporters of the Bernie Sanders campaign which was officially adopted by his campaign. Grab him by the pussy, a remark made by Trump during a 2005 behind-the-scenes conversation with Billy Bush which was released during the campaign. The remark was part of a conversation in which Trump boasted that as a celebrity he can get away with things such as grabbing women by their genitalia that non-celebrities cannot. I'm with her, Clinton's unofficial campaign slogan, Stronger Together, was the official slogan. Lock her up, a chant first used at the Republican convention to claim that Hillary Clinton is guilty of a crime. The chant was later used at many Trump campaign rallies. Make America Great Again, Trump's campaign slogan. Trump's use of derogatory nicknames to deride his opponents, these include Crooked Hillary, Little Marco, Low Energy Jeb, and Leon Ted. Small hands, Marco Rubio asserting that Trump has small hands, and implying that the size of his hands is proportional to the size of his genitals. Such a nasty woman, Donald Trump's response to Hillary Clinton after her saying that her proposed rise in Social Security contributions would also include Trump's Social Security contributions. Assuming he can't figure out how to get out of it. What is Aleppo? Uttered by Gary Johnson during an interview when questioned about the status of Aleppo during the Syrian civil war. What the hell do you have to lose? Said by Trump to inner-city African Americans at rallies starting on August 19, 2016. Topic: Debates. Topic: Primary election debates. Topic General Election Debates The Commission on Presidential Debates CPD, a non-profit organization, hosted debates between qualifying presidential and vice-presidential candidates. According to the Commission's website, to be eligible to opt to participate in the anticipated debates, in addition to being constitutionally eligible, candidates must appear on a sufficient number of state ballots to have a mathematical chance of winning a majority vote in the Electoral College, and have a level of support of at least 15% of the national electorate as determined by five selected national public opinion polling organizations, using the average of those organizations' most recently publicly reported results at the time of the determination. The three Three locations chosen to host the presidential debates, and the one location selected to host the vice presidential debate, were announced on September 23, 2015. The site of the first debate was originally designated as Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio. However, due to rising costs and security concerns, the debate was moved to Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. On August 19, Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager, confirmed that Trump would participate in a series of three debates. 
Trump had complained two of the scheduled debates, one on September 26 and the other October 9, would have to compete for viewers with National Football League games, referencing the similar complaints made regarding the dates with low expected ratings during the Democratic Party presidential debates. The Free and Equal Elections Foundation announced plans to host an open debate among all presidential candidates who had ballot access sufficient to represent a majority of electoral votes. In October 2016 Free and Equal extended the invitation to all candidates with ballot lines representing at least 15% of the electoral vote. The nominees of the Democratic, Republican, Libertarian, Green, Constitution, Reform, and Socialism and Liberation parties, as well as independent candidate Evan McMullen, were invited to participate. The debate was held at the University of Colorado Baldur's Mackey Auditorium on October 25, 2016. It was moderated by Ed Asner and Christina Tobin, with Daryl Castle, Rocky De La Fuente, and Gloria La Riva participating. PBS hosted a debate moderated by Tavis Smiley between Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson and Green Party candidate Jill Stein. Topic: <laughs> Results. The election was held on November 8, 2016. Clinton cast her vote in Chappaqua, New York, while Trump voted at a Manhattan public school. Throughout the day, the election process went more smoothly than many had expected, with only a few reports of long lines and equipment problems. The news media and election experts were surprised twice, at Trump's winning the GOP nomination, and, in his winning the Electoral College. English political scientist Lloyd Gruber said. One of the major casualties of the 2016 election season has been the reputation of political science, a discipline whose practitioners had largely dismissed Donald Trump's chances of gaining the Republican nomination. The final polls showed a lead by Clinton and in the end she did receive more votes. Trump himself expected, based on polling, to lose the election and rented a small hotel ballroom to make a brief concession speech. I said if we're going to lose I don't want a big ballroom. He said. The Republican candidate performed surprisingly well in all battleground states, especially Florida, Iowa, Ohio and North Carolina. Even Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, states that had been predicted to vote Democratic, were won by Trump. Cindy Adams, present at Trump Tower, reported that. Trump Town knew they'd won by 5.30. Math, calculations, candidate dislike causing voter abstention begat the numbers. Trump said that he was surprised by how that map was getting red as hell. That map was bleeding red. I always used to believe in polls. I don't believe them anymore. According to the authors of Shattered, Inside Hillary Clinton's Doomed Campaign, by late Tuesday night the White House had concluded that Trump would win the election. Obama aide David Simus called Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook to persuade Clinton to concede the election, with no success. Obama then called Clinton directly, citing the importance of continuity of government, to ask her to publicly acknowledge that Trump had won. Believing that Clinton was still unwilling to concede, the president then called her campaign chair John Podesta, but the call to Clinton had likely already persuaded her. On Wednesday morning at 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time ET, it was reported that Trump had secured Wisconsin's 10 electoral votes, giving him a majority of the 538 electors in the Electoral College, enough to make him the president-elect of the United States. Clinton called Trump early that morning to concede defeat, and at 2.50 a.m. Eastern Time, Trump gave his victory speech. Later that day, Clinton asked her supporters to accept the result and hoped that Trump would be a successful president for all Americans. In his speech, Trump appealed for unity, saying, It is time for us to come together as one united people, and praised Clinton as someone who was owed a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. Six states plus a portion of Maine that Obama won in 2012 switched to Trump electoral college votes in parentheses, Florida 29, Pennsylvania 20, Ohio 18, Michigan 16, Wisconsin 10, Iowa 6, and Maine's 2nd Congressional District 1. Initially, Trump won exactly 100 more electoral college votes than Mitt Romney had in 2012, with two lost to faithless electors in the final tally. 
39 states swung more Republican compared to the previous presidential election, while 11 states and the District of Columbia swung more Democratic, based on United States Census Bureau estimates of the voting age population VAP. .Turnout of voters casting a vote for president was nearly 1% higher than 2012. Examining overall turnout in the 2016 election, University of Florida professor Michael McDonald estimated that 138. 8 million Americans cast a ballot in 2016. 65.9 million of those ballots were counted for Clinton and just under 63 million for Trump, representing 20.3% Clinton and 19.4% Trump of a census estimate of U.S. population that day of 324 million. Considering a VAP of 250.6 million people and voting eligible population VEP of 230.6 million people, this is a turnout rate of 55.4% VAP and 60.2% VEP. Based on this estimate, voter turnout was up compared to 2012 54.1% VAP but down compared to 2008 57.4% VAP. A FEC report of the election recorded an official total of 136.7 million votes cast for president more than any prior election. Data scientist Azar Hamdan noted the paradoxes of the 2016 outcome, saying that, chief among them was the discrepancy between the popular vote, which Hillary Clinton won by 2.8 million votes, and the Electoral College, where Trump won 304 to 227. He said Trump outperformed Mitt Romney's 2012 results, while Clinton only just matched Barack Obama's 2012 totals. Hamden also said Trump was the highest vote earner of any Republican candidate ever, exceeding George W. Bush's 62.04 million votes in 2004, though neither reached Clinton's 65.9 million, nor Obama's 69.5 million votes in 2008, the overall record. He concluded, with help from the Cook Political Report, that the election hinged not on Clinton's large 2.8 million overall vote margin over Trump, but rather on about 78,000 votes from only three counties in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Candidates table Notes Source Popular vote Nationwide, Lape, David. 2016 Presidential Election Results. Dave Lape's Atlas of U.S. Presidential Elections. Retrieved February 4, 2018. For Bernie Sanders and John Kasich, CA, and NH, VT, NC, PA, RE. Topic. Results by state. The table below displays the official vote tallies by each state's electoral college voting method. The source for the results of all states is the official Federal Election Commission report. The column labeled, Margin, shows Trump's margin of victory over Clinton. The margin is negative for every state that Clinton won. A total of 29 third-party and independent presidential candidates appeared on the ballot in at least one state. Former Governor of New Mexico Gary Johnson and physician Jill Stein repeated their 2012 roles as the nominees for the Libertarian Party and the Green Party, respectively. With ballot access to the entire national electorate, Johnson received nearly 4.5 million votes 3.27%, the highest nationwide vote share for a third-party candidate since Ross Perot in 1996, while Stein received almost 1.45 million votes 1.06%, the most for a Green nominee since Ralph Nader in 2000. Independent candidate Evan McMullen, who appeared on the ballot in 11 states, received over 732,000 votes 0.53%. He won 21.4% of the vote in his home state of Utah, the highest share of the vote for a third-party candidate in any state since 1992. Despite dropping out of the election following his defeat in the Democratic primary, Senator Bernie Sanders received 5.7% of the vote in his home state of Vermont, the highest write-in draft campaign percentage for a presidential candidate in American history. Because of this, some of his supporters have suggested that Bernie would have won, meaning that Sanders could have beaten Trump even though Clinton was unable to. Johnson and McMullen were the first third party candidates since Nader to receive at least 5% of the vote in one or more states, with Johnson crossing the mark in 11 states and McMullen crossing it in two. 
Aside from Florida and North Carolina, the states which secured Trump's victory are situated in the Great Lakes, Rust Belt region. Wisconsin went Republican for the first time since 1984, while Pennsylvania and Michigan went Republican for the first time since 1988. Trump also won Maine's second congressional district, which had also not been won by a Republican presidential candidate since 1988. Stein petitioned for a recount in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. The Clinton campaign pledged to participate in the Green Party recount efforts, while Trump backers challenged them in court. Meanwhile, American Delta Party, Reform Party presidential candidate Rocky De La Fuente petitioned for and was granted a partial recount in Nevada. Electoral methods WTA — winner takes all CD — congressional district Two states Maine and Nebraska allow for their electoral votes to be split between candidates. The winner within each congressional district gets one electoral vote for the district. The winner of the statewide vote gets two additional electoral votes. Results are from the New York Times. Topic. Close races Red denotes states or congressional districts whose electoral votes are awarded separately won by Republican Donald Trump, blue denotes those won by Democrat Hillary Clinton. States where the margin of victory was under 1% 50 electoral votes, 46 won by Trump, 4 by Clinton. Michigan, 0.23% 16. New Hampshire, 0.37% 4 Pennsylvania, 0.72% 20 tipping point state, including two faithless Texas GOP electors Wisconsin, 0.77% 10 tipping point state, excluding the two faithless GOP electors states, districts where the margin of victory was between 1% and 5% 83 electoral votes, 56 won by Trump, 27 by Clinton Florida, 1.20% 29 Minnesota, 1.52% 10 Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, 2.24% 1 Nevada, 2.42% 6 Maine, 2.96% 2 Arizona, 3.55% 11 North Carolina, 3.66% 15 Colorado, 4.91% 9 states where the margin of victory was between 5% and 10% 94 electoral votes, 76 won by Trump, 18 by Clinton. Georgia, 5.16% 16 Virginia, 5.32% 13 Ohio, 8.13% 18 New Mexico, 8.21% 5 Texas, 8.99% 36 Iowa, 9. 41% 6. Topic. Breakdown by ticket Topic. Battleground states Most media outlets announced the beginning of the presidential race about 20 months prior to Election Day. Soon after the first contestants declared their candidacy, Larry Sabato listed Virginia, Colorado, Iowa, New Hampshire, Florida, Nevada, and Ohio as the seven states most likely to be contested in the general election. After Donald Trump clinched the Republican presidential nomination, many pundits felt that the major campaign locations might be different from what had originally been expected. Rust Belt states such as Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and even Michigan were thought to be in play with Trump as the nominee, while states with large minority populations, such as Colorado and Virginia, were expected to shift towards Clinton. By the convention's period and the debates, however, it did not seem as though the Rust Belt states could deliver a victory to Trump, as many of them were considered to be part of the blue wall of Democratic-leaning states. According to Politico and the 538 online blog, his path to victory went through states such as Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, New Hampshire, and possibly Colorado. Early polling indicated a closer than usual race in former Democratic strongholds such as Washington, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Maine for the two statewide electoral votes, and New Mexico. 
Meanwhile, research indicators from inside of a host of Republican-leaning states such as Arizona, Indiana, Georgia, South Carolina, Alaska, Utah, Texas, Kansas, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, and South Dakota reported weaker support for Trump than expected, although the nominee's position solidified in a few other areas. Some reviews took this information as evidence of an expanded swing state map, a consensus among political pundits developed throughout the primary election season regarding swing states. From the results of presidential elections from 2004 through to 2012, the Democratic and Republican parties would generally start with a safe electoral vote count of about 150 to 200. However, the margins required to constitute a swing state are vague, and can vary between groups of analysts. It was thought that left-leaning states in the Rust Belt could become more conservative, as Trump had strong appeal among many blue-collar workers. They represent a large portion of the American populace and were a major factor in Trump's eventual nomination. Trump's primary campaign was propelled by victories in Democratic states, and his supporters often did not identify as Republican. In addition, local factors may come into play. For example, Utah was the reddest state in 2012, although the Republican share was boosted significantly by the candidacy of Mormon candidate Mitt Romney. Despite its partisan orientation, some reports suggested a victory there by independent candidate Evan McMullen, particularly if there was a nationwide blowout. Media reports indicated that both candidates planned to concentrate on Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and North Carolina. Among the Republican-leaning states, potential Democratic targets included Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, Georgia, and Arizona. Trump's relatively poor polling in some traditionally Republican states, such as Utah, raised the possibility that they could vote for Clinton, despite easy wins there by recent Republican nominees. However, many analysts asserted that these states were not yet viable Democratic destinations. Several sites and individuals publish electoral predictions. These generally rate the race by the likelihood for each party to win a state. The toss-up label is usually used to indicate that neither party has an advantage. Lean to indicate a party has a slight edge. Likely to indicate a party has a clear but not overwhelming advantage. And safe to indicate a party has an advantage that cannot be overcome, as the parameters of the race established themselves, analysts converged on a narrower list of contested states, which were relatively similar to those of recent elections. On November 7, the Cook Political Report categorized Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Iowa, Michigan, Nevada, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin as states with close races. Additionally, a district from each of Maine and Nebraska were considered to be coin flips. Meanwhile, 538 listed 22 states as potentially competitive about a month before the election, Maine's two at-large electoral votes, New Mexico, Minnesota, Michigan, Colorado, Virginia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Nevada, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, Iowa, Arizona, Georgia, Alaska, South Carolina, Texas, Indiana, Missouri, and Utah, as well as Maine's 2nd and Nebraska's 2nd congressional districts. Nate Silver, the publication's editor-in-chief, subsequently removed Texas, South Carolina, Missouri, and Indiana from the list after the race tightened significantly. These conclusions were supported by models such as the Princeton Elections Consortium, the New York Times Upshot, and punditry evaluations from Sabato's Crystal Ball and the Cook Political Report. Clinton won states like New Mexico by less than 10 percentage points. Among the states where the candidates finished at a margin of within 7%, Clinton won Virginia 13 electoral votes, Colorado 9, Maine 2, Minnesota 10, and New Hampshire 4. On the other hand, Trump won Michigan 16, Pennsylvania 20, Wisconsin 10, Florida 29, North Carolina 15, Arizona 11, Nebraska's 2nd District 1, and Georgia 16. States won by Obama in the 2012 contest, such as Ohio 18, Iowa 6, and Maine's 2nd District 1, were also won by Trump. The close result in Maine was not expected by most commentators, nor were Trump's victory of over 10 points in the 2nd District and their disparities. The dramatic shift of Midwestern states towards Trump were contrasted in the media against the relative movement of Southern states towards the Democrats. For example, former Democratic strongholds such as Minnesota and Maine leaned towards the GOP. Meanwhile, Iowa voted more Republican than Texas did, Georgia was more Democratic than Ohio, and the margin of victory for Trump was greater in North Carolina than Arizona. 
Trump's smaller victories in Alaska and Utah also took some experts by surprise. After the conventions of the national parties, candidates from the main parties carried out trips to the states Florida 72, Pennsylvania 59, North Carolina 52, Ohio 43, Virginia 25, Michigan 24, Iowa 23, New Hampshire 22, Colorado 19, Nevada 16, Wisconsin 15, Arizona 10. Topic Maps Topic Voter Demographics Voter demographic data for 2016 were collected by Edison Research for the National Election Pool, a consortium of ABC News, CBS News, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, and the Associated Press. The voter survey is based on exit polls completed by 24,537 voters leaving 350 voting places throughout the United States on Election Day, in addition to 4,398 telephone interviews with early and absentee voters. Trump's crucial victories in the Midwest were aided in large part by his strong margins among non-college whites, while Obama lost those voters by a margin of 10 points in 2012, Clinton lost this group by 20%. The election also represented the first time that Republicans performed better among lower-income whites than among affluent white voters. To some analysts' surprise, Trump narrowed Clinton's margin compared to Obama by seven points among blacks and African Americans, eight points among Latinos, and eleven points among Asian Americans. Meanwhile, Trump increased his lead with non-Hispanic white voters through 1% over Mitt Romney's performance, and American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Pacific Islanders shifted their support towards the Republican candidate using the same relative amount. Additionally, although 74% of Muslim voters supported Clinton, Trump nearly doubled his support among those voters compared to Mitt Romney, according to the Council on American Islamic Relations exit poll. However, more convincing data from the polling firm Latino Decisions indicates that Clinton received a higher share of the Hispanic vote, and Trump a lower share, than the Edison exit polls showed. Using wider, more geographically and linguistically representative sampling, Latino Decisions concluded that Clinton won 79% of Hispanic voters also an improvement over Obama's share in 2008 and 2012, while Trump won only 18% lower than previous Republicans such as Romney and McCain. Additionally, the 2016 Cooperative Congressional Election Study found that Clinton's share of the Hispanic vote was one percentage point higher than Obama's in 2012, while Trump's was seven percentage points lower than Romney's. Similarly, a large, multilingual study by the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund found that Clinton won 79% of Asian American voters, higher than the Edison exit poll showed, while Trump only won 18%, a decrease from McCain's and Romney's numbers. Furthermore, according to the AALDEF's report, Trump received merely 2% of the Muslim American vote, whereas Clinton received 97%. <laughs> Forecasting Various methods were used to forecast the outcome of the 2016 election. For the 2016 election, there were many competing election forecast approaches including Nate Silver's 538, The Upshot at the New York Times, Daily Kos, Princeton Election Consortium, Cook Political Report, Rothenberg and Gonzalez, Polyvote, Sabato's Crystal Ball and Electoral Vote. These models mostly showed a Democratic advantage since the nominees were confirmed, and were supported by pundits and statisticians, including Nate Silver of 538, Nate Cohn at the New York Times, and Larry Sabato from the Crystal Ball Newsletter, who predicted a Democratic victory in competitive presidential races and projected consistent leads in several battleground states around the country. The near unanimity of forecasters in predicting a Clinton victory may have been the result of groupthink. However, 538's model pointed to the possibility of an electoral college popular vote split widening in the final weeks based on Trump's improvement in swing states like Florida or Pennsylvania. This was due to the demographics targeted by Trump's campaign, which lived in big numbers there. In addition to Clinton's poor performance in several of those swing states in comparison with Obama's performance in 2012, as well as having a big number of her potential voters in very populated traditionally blue states, but also in some very populated states traditionally red, like Texas, which were projected safe for Trump, early exit polls generally favored Clinton. 
After the polls closed and some of the results came in, the forecasts were found to be inaccurate, as Trump performed better in the competitive Midwestern states, such as Iowa, Ohio, and Minnesota, than expected. Three states Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan which were considered to be part of Clinton's firewall, were won by Trump. Of the states in the Great Lakes region, Clinton won the swing state of Minnesota by one point, as well as traditional Democratic strongholds such as New York and Illinois with populous urban centers. This result stands in contrast to the 2012 results, when President Obama won all but Indiana, which he carried in 2008. This table displays the final polling average published by Real Clear Politics on November 7, the actual electoral margin, and the overperformance by either candidate relative to the polls. Many pollsters were puzzled by the failure of mainstream forecasting models to predict the outcome of the 2016 election. Some journalists compared the 2016 election to the failure of prognosticator Arthur Henning in the Dewey Defeats Truman incident from the 1948 presidential election. Sean Trend, writing for Real Clear Politics, wrote that many of the polls were accurate, but that the pundits' interpretation of these polls neglected polling error. Nate Silver found that the high number of undecided and third-party voters in the election was neglected in many of these models, and that many of these voters decided to vote for Trump. According to a February 2018 study by Public Opinion Quarterly, the main sources of polling error were a late swing in vote preference toward Trump and a pervasive failure to adjust for overrepresentation of college graduates who favored Clinton. Whereas the share of shy Trump voters who declined to admit their support for Trump to the pollsters proved to be negligible. 538's final polls plus forecast predicted 18 states, plus the second congressional districts of Maine and Nebraska, with an interval of confidence lower than 90%. However, every major forecaster, including 538, the New York Times Upshot, Prediction Markets Aggregator Predictwise, election betting odds from Maxim Lott and John Stossel, the Dailycos, the Princeton Election Consortium, the Huffington Post, the Cook Political Report, Larry Sabato's Crystal Ball, and the Rothenberg and Gonzalez Report, called every state the same way although Cook and Rothenberg Gonzalez left two and five states as toss-ups, respectively. The sole exception was Maine's second congressional district. Of the forecasters who published results on the district, the Times gave Trump a 64% chance of winning and Predictwise a 52% chance, 538 gave Clinton a 51% chance of winning in polls only and 54% in polls plus, Princeton gave her a 60% chance, Cook labeled it a toss-up, and Sabato leaned it towards Trump. The following table displays the final winning probabilities given by each outlet, along with the final electoral result. The states shown have been identified by Politico, Whipboard, The New York Times, and The Crystal Ball as battlegrounds. Topic: Viewership. Topic: Post-election events and controversies. Trump's victory, considered unlikely by most forecasts, was characterized as an upset and as shocking by the media. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Protests. Following the announcement of Trump's election, large protests broke out across the United States with some continuing for several days. Protesters have held up a number of different signs and chanted various shouts including not my president, and we don't accept the president-elect. The movement organized on Twitter under the hashtags hashtag anti-Trump and hash not my president. High school and college students walked out of classes to protest. The protests were peaceful for the most part. At some protests fires were lit, flags and other items were burned and people yelled derogatory remarks about Trump. Rioters also broke glass at certain locations. Celebrities such as Madonna, Cher, and Lady Gaga took part in New York. Some protesters took to blocking freeways in Los Angeles, San Diego, and Portland, Oregon, and were dispersed by police in the early hours of the morning. In a number of cities, protesters were dispersed with rubber bullets, pepper spray and bean bags fired by police. In New York City, calls were made to continue the protests over the coming days after the election. Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani called protesters a bunch of spoiled cry babies, 
Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti expressed understanding of the protests and praised those who peacefully wanted to make their voices heard. Vote tampering concerns After the election, computer scientists, including J. Alex Halderman, the director of the University of Michigan Center for Computer Security and Society, urged the Clinton campaign to request an election recount in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania three swing states where Trump had won narrowly for the purpose of excluding the possibility that the hacking of electronic voting machines had influenced the recorded outcome. However, statistician Nate Silver performed a regression analysis which demonstrated that the alleged discrepancy between paper ballots and electronic voting machines completely disappears once you control for race and education level. On November 25, 2016, the Obama administration said the results from November 8 accurately reflect the will of the American people. The following day, the White House released another statement, saying, the federal government did not observe any increased level of malicious cyberactivity aimed at disrupting our electoral process on Election Day. Donald Trump and New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu both complained that liberal voters from Massachusetts were illegally bused into New Hampshire for the 2016 election, and Scott Brown blamed the same phenomenon for losing his Senate race in 2014. The New Hampshire Secretary of State and New Hampshire Department of Justice issued a report in 2018 regarding complaints of voters being bused in from Vermont, Maine, and Massachusetts for the 2016 election. They found that in every case, field inspectors were able to determine that the voters were from New Hampshire, though they were riding a bus operated by an out-of-state company which has its name and address written on the outside of the bus, presumably the source of the confusion. Out of 743,000 votes cast, four were determined to be cast illegally, either because the voters were told to go to the wrong location, or because the voter believed they were able to vote in each town in which they owned property. Out of about 6,000 same-day voter registrations in the state, the report says only 66 voters could not have their residency confirmed, though fraud is not the only explanation for such a failure. Recount petitions On November 23, Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein launched a public fundraiser to pay for recounts in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, asserting that the election's outcome had been affected by hacking in those states. Stein did not provide evidence for her claims. Changing the outcome of these three states would make Clinton the winner, and this would require showing that fewer than 60,000 votes had been counted for Trump which should have been counted for Clinton. Stein filed for a recount in Wisconsin on November 25, after which Clinton campaign general counsel Mark Elias stated that their campaign would join Stein's recount efforts in that state and possibly others, in order to ensure the process proceeds in a manner that is fair to all sides. Stein subsequently filed for a recount in Pennsylvania on November 28, and in Michigan on November 30. Concurrently, American Delta Party, Reform Party presidential candidate Rocky De La Fuente sought and was granted a partial recount in Nevada that was unrelated to Stein's efforts. President elect Donald Trump issued a statement denouncing Stein's Wisconsin recount request, saying, The people have spoken and the election is over. Trump further commented that the recount is a scam by the Green Party for an election that has already been conceded." The Trump campaign and Republican Party officials moved to block Stein's three recount efforts through state and federal courts, U.S. District Judge Mark Goldsmith ordered a halt to the recount in Michigan on December 7, dissolving a previous temporary restraining order against the Michigan Board of Elections that allowed the recount to continue, stating in his order, "...plaintiffs have not presented evidence of tampering or mistake." Instead, they present speculative claims going to the vulnerability of the voting machinery, but not actual injury. On December 12, U.S. District Judge Paul Diamond rejected an appeal by the Green Party and Jill Stein to force a recount in Pennsylvania, stating that suspicion of a hacked Pennsylvania election borders on the irrational, and that granting the Green Party's recount bid could ensure that no Pennsylvania vote counts. Given the December 13, 2016, federal deadline to certify the vote for the Electoral College. 
Meanwhile, the Wisconsin recount was allowed to continue as it was nearing completion and had uncovered no significant irregularities. The recounts in Wisconsin and Nevada were completed on schedule, resulting in only minor changes to vote tallies. A partial recount of Michigan ballot found some precinct imbalances in Detroit, which were corrected. A subsequent state audit found no evidence of voter fraud and concluded that the mistakes, which were almost entirely caused by poll worker mistakes attributed to poor training, did not impair the ability of Detroit residents to cast a ballot and have their vote counted. The overall outcome of the election remained unchanged by the recount efforts. Topic. Electoral college lobbying Intense lobbying in one case involving claims of harassment and death threats and grassroots campaigns have been directed at various GOP electors of the United States Electoral College to convince a sufficient number of them 37 to not vote for Trump, thus precluding a Trump presidency. Members of the Electoral College themselves started a campaign for other members to vote their conscience for the good of America. In accordance with Alexander Hamilton's Federalist Paper No. 68, this group's members may have become faithless electors in the presidential election. On December 5, former candidate Lawrence Lessig and attorney Lawrence Tribe established the Electors Trust under the aegis of Equal Citizens, U.S. to provide pro bono legal counsel as well as a secure communications platform for members of the Electoral College who are regarding a vote of conscience against Trump. On December 6, Colorado Secretary of State Wayne W. Williams castigated Democratic electors who had filed a lawsuit in federal court to have the state law binding them to the popular vote in their case for Hillary Clinton overturned. On December 10, 10 electors, in an open letter headed by Christine Pelosi to the Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, demanded an intelligence briefing in light of Russian interference in the election to help Trump win the presidency. Fifty-eight additional electors subsequently added their names to the letter, bringing the total to 68 electors from 17 different states. On December 16, the briefing request was denied. On December 19, several electors voted against their pledged candidates, two against Trump and five against Clinton. A further three electors attempted to vote against Clinton but were replaced or forced to vote again. The 115th United States Congress officially certified the results on January 6, 2017. Topic: Faithless electors. In the Electoral College vote on December 19, for the first time since 1808, multiple faithless electors voted against their pledged qualified presidential candidate. Five Democrats rebelled in Washington and Hawaii, while two Republicans rebelled in Texas. Two Democratic electors, one in Minnesota and one in Colorado, were replaced after voting for Bernie Sanders and John Kasich, respectively. Electors in Maine conducted a second vote after one of its members voted for Sanders, the elector then voted for Clinton. Likewise, for the first time since 1896, multiple faithless electors voted against the pledged qualified vice presidential candidate. One Clinton elector in Colorado attempted to vote for John Kasich. The single vote was ruled invalid by Colorado state law, the elector was dismissed, and an alternative elector was sworn in who voted for Clinton. One Clinton elector in Minnesota voted for Bernie Sanders as president and Tulsi Gabbard as vice president. His votes were discarded and he was replaced by an alternate who voted for Clinton. One Clinton elector in Maine voted for Bernie Sanders. This vote was invalidated as improper and the elector subsequently voted for Clinton. Four Clinton electors in Washington did not vote for Clinton. Three votes went to Colin Powell and one to Faith Spotted Eagle. One Trump elector in Georgia resigned before the vote rather than vote for Trump and was replaced by an alternate. Two Trump electors in Texas did not vote for Trump one vote went to John Kasich, one to Ron Paul, one elector did not vote for Pence and instead voted for Carly Fiorina for vice president, a third resigned before the vote rather than vote for Trump and was replaced by an alternate. One Clinton elector in Hawaii voted for Bernie Sanders. Of the faithless votes, Colin Powell and Elizabeth Warren were the only two to receive more than one. Powell received three electoral votes for president and Warren received two for vice president. Receiving one valid electoral vote each were Sanders, John Kasich, Ron Paul and Faith Spotted Eagle for president, and Carly Fiorina, Susan Collins, Winona LaDuke and Maria Cantwell for vice president. 
Sanders is the first Jewish American to receive an electoral vote for president. Laduque is the first Green Party member to receive an electoral vote, and Paul is the third member of the Libertarian Party to do so, following the party's presidential and vice presidential nominees each getting one vote in 1972. It is the first election with faithless electors from more than one political party. The seven people to receive electoral votes for president were the most in a single election since 1796, and more than any other election since the enactment of the Twelfth Amendment in 1804. See also History of the United States 2008 -present. Inauguration of Donald Trump 2016 United States gubernatorial elections 2016 United States House of Representatives elections 2016 United States Senate elections equals equals notes <laughs>